What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. In this episode, we're going to discuss even more new features in iOS 17 Beta 3. We're gonna talk about the iPhone 15's exclusive color, why not to expect a new iPhone SE anytime soon, the rise of threads and the downfall of ChatGPT, a crazy AirTag story, and much more. And as always, if you wanna continue staying updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. Also check out the Apple Den newsletter it is free and also linked in the description below. All right, so let's start off by talking about even more iOS 17 features and changes. Now, the first one has to do with the control center. If you swipe down on the control center and haptic press on the timer right here and you start a timer, you will notice in beta three, we have a plus button next to pause. Whereas in beta two, there was no plus button. You can only add one timer at a time from the control center. Now, unfortunately, this does not expand Band beyond this, like when you tap on the plus, it just takes you into the timer section and clock, which is kind of annoying and kind of defeats the purpose, but it is cool that we still have that there inside of the control center and that is brand new in beta three. There's also a new icon in the now playing platter in the control center and also in music when you're playing music on two different types of audio. So for example, if I'm playing on like an Apple TV and on a HomePod, it will show both of those in that glyph. Also in the weather application, there were quite a few changes that I covered in my original What's New video for beta three, but this air quality section, the font is a little bit bigger here. So the 33 and good is larger than it was in beta two. If you are a German speaker and you use German for Siri, you will now notice that there are two additional Siri voices with beta three. Beta three also introduces this new Memoji splash screen for Apple Fitness. There continues to be more references to the Apple Vision Pro AR VR headsets. And you can see right here, there's gonna be a scent from my Apple Vision Pro. And yes, that is going to be the new flex. I'm definitely gonna be sending all my text messages from my Apple Vision Pro, just so it says that. And this third beta of iOS 17 also confirmed that the Apple Vision Pro will have the Find My features. That wasn't really, you know, not expected, but Apple didn't mention that themselves. So this is our first kind of confirmation that we will have Find My-like features for the headsets. This third beta also made a change to Apple Savings Account transfers. So the transfers have now been increased from one to three business days to five business days. Here's a cool one related to Apple Pay and the wallet application. It says, if you've selected location services for wallet, your device will also evaluate information about your device's location to develop on-device fraud protection assessments. And there's a new toggle quick nav setting in accessibility for voiceover. So all of these are some minor code changes found in the code by Steve Moser. Also something I mentioned in my iOS 17 beta two video is inside of settings and weather and under privacy, before it used to say privacy about privacy title. It was just code that was left in there, but now that has been fixed in beta three. There's a couple of bugs that iOS 17 beta three addressed that I was not specifically facing, but I know a lot of you guys were. So the first one has to do with PNG images, like transparent images, not showing up properly inside of the photos application, but that appears to be fixed now in beta three. There was also a really strange issue that was related to HDR in Safari specifically, and I've heard other applications as well, but mainly HDR issues inside of Safari, like where other parts of the screen would be brighter than others. That has been addressed as well in beta three. Now, as far as existing bugs go, I do wanna mention the keyboard bug because in my beta three what's new video, I mentioned how the keyboard bug has been addressed, it's been fixed. But after using beta three for a while, I can say that it has definitely gotten better, but it is not completely fixed. So I noticed for spotlight search, which is where, you know, the number one place I had the issue where the keyboard sometimes would just simply not pop up or it would disappear while I'm typing, that seems to have been fixed. So with spotlight search, it seems fine. But in other applications like, you know, messages, some people saw it in WhatsApp, the keyboard is still disappearing. So it's definitely gotten better with beta three. It's just not fully, you know, resolved yet. And then I also noticed with AirDrop that my destination, like where I'd be trying to AirDrop to, like my Mac, for example, every time I tapped to AirDrop share like an image, 
I would go to select my Mac and it would just disappear before I could even tap on it. And that happened multiple times. I'd be very quick and tap on it right away before it disappeared. So there seems to be some issues with AirDrop in beta three as well. And then I know some people are also having issues with wallpapers crashing. Like when you go to edit a wallpaper, whether that be on the lock screen or home screen, their device would just crash. I've not had that issue, but I have seen you guys mention that in the comments. Okay, so let's talk about the performance because after using this beta, this third beta for a few days now, I have to say that performance does definitely feel better than beta two. I definitely think that the performance is better here in beta three. There's less bugs, there's less jitter, there's you know less issues with the keyboard, especially with the typing indicator. I don't have near as many UI bugs. Everything feels smoother here in beta three. Now it's not you know iOS 16 level yet. I still don't think we're on like 16.5.1 or 16.6 level of smooth, but that'll probably come in the future, you know, with future betas. But so far, I really don't have any complaints at all in terms of performance here in iOS 17 on beta three. But when it comes to battery life, and I'm pulling out my main device here, my 14 Pro, battery life is... I would say it's a little bit better here on beta three, but it's still terrible. Like beta two was just straight up terrible. There was nothing good I could say about the battery life in beta one or two, but here in iOS 17 beta three, it's still terrible, but it's not like terrible. Like, oh my God, I can't even use this. It's not that bad. It's a little bit better, I would say. And more specifically, the background activity issue seems to finally be fixed for me, which I've had since beta one, specifically in the mail application. So you can see here my last 24 hours, music is actually using the most of my data. Threads is falling down there, which if you're not following me on threads, that's linked down in the description below. But if we go to my last 10 days here, you'll notice something interesting. So if you go to my Monday, you know, any of these days in the past, take a look at my number one battery usage, my number one battery drainer down there. It's always going to be mail and it's almost always going to be a background activity. And that was an issue I've had for a while. Look at this every day, Sunday, or that's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and not on Tuesday, it was the second, but you know, you could see all those days, mail is my number one battery drainer. But now since iOS 17 beta three came out on Wednesday, take a look at that. You don't see it there. You don't see it on Thursday. You don't see it on Friday either. I don't have that issue anymore. So for that reason, I will say that battery life is better here on iOS 17 beta three, but it's still not on par, of course, with iOS 16. We still have a ways to go with battery life. All right. So now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 17 public beta. So I've been asked a ton of questions about the public beta for iOS 17 and I think that will be coming next, most likely on Monday, July 10th. Now it could come any day next week, but Apple does usually stick to those Monday releases. As I've been saying for about a month now, they usually stick to those Monday releases. So we should see that on the 10th, but of course it is possible on the 11th or the 12th as well. And that's most likely going to be the same build as the third developer beta. It could be a slightly updated version of that build, but it's generally you know, going to perform about the same as beta three. And especially feature wise, it's gonna have the same features that we saw in developer beta three. And then the week after that, which is going to be July 17th, is when we will see iOS 17 developer beta four and also the second public beta. iOS 16.6 .6 is the next public release for iOS 16 users. So if you're still on iOS 16, we should see I would assume the RC build next week is either gonna be a beta five or an RC build next week. And then we should get iOS 16.6. .6. We will get iOS 16.6, .6, the final release at some point in July, most likely within the next two weeks. All right, so I wanted to touch on some more iOS specific news before we move on to the main news section of this episode. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the new social media app in town from Meta called Threads. This is the Twitter competitor, but I really don't think it's super simple similar to Twitter in a lot of ways. I think it's just completely different from Twitter. It's, it's really a good fit. So anyway, this is Threads. This is what the UI looks like. I think it looks really awesome. The UI is great. You can see my profile here. I'm just at Brandon Butch. The signup process was dead simple. Everything just transfers over from your Instagram, including all your followers, your block list, all of that. Your followers don't transfer, but you get the option to auto follow everybody you are already following on Instagram, which is nice. However, there is one bug in iOS 17, at least at the time of recording this, and that is if you select an image and you tap on add, it will crash the application. And the only way to actually get a photo 
photo in there is to copy the photo and paste it in there. So if I go ahead to my photos and I go right here and I copy and I can just paste in it just like that and everything works as intended. You could also do it for replies. But overall, I'm liking threads. If you guys are on threads, make sure to follow me at Brandon Butch and let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. It's also pretty interesting because Elon Musk and Twitter are threatening to sue Meta, which is crazy because, you know, it's over stealing trade secrets and misuse of intellectual property. So it seems like a legitimate lawsuit that is in the works here. And that could be why we have the whole Elon versus, you know, Zuckerberg cage match. This could be, this could be you know, what they were referencing with that. It could have been, you know, not real all along. It was more of just metaphorical for these two competing platforms. Now, speaking of new applications, let's talk about ChatGPT because ChatGPT was everywhere. I mean, you could not go anywhere on the internet without hearing about ChatGPT from January until like June. And now it seems like there is a drop off in ChatGPT users. So the downloads for the iPhone in the US App Store were down 38% month over month in June. And according to the Washington Post, this big drop is not just limited to gaining new users because traffic to ChatGPT's website worldwide fell 10% month over month in June. So obviously some pretty big drop offs there, but I don't think ChatGPT is anywhere close to dead. I mean, I just think that we reached such a euphoric moment in you know talking about ChatGPT and just everything about AI that it had to come down at some point. And by the way, if you don't have ChatGPT, I would highly recommend it, especially because you do have the lock screen widget right here, which comes in handy to be able to just simply tap on that and access ChatGPT straight from your lock screen. I really love utilizing that pretty much on a daily basis. I use that. Now here's something cool that I've unfortunately not been able to see yet, but Instagram is launching live activities. Now you might be wondering how is Instagram going to use live activities? Well, they're actually doing it to show the progress of a video or photo that you're uploading to the platform. So if you're uploading like a video, for example, and you go out of the application and then you go back to your lock screen, you will now see a live activity showing the progress of when that video or photo is going to be posted. And I think that's a really unique way of using live activities and I really like it. So I'm still waiting for that to roll out. It's not hit my device yet, but you should start seeing that in the coming days for Instagram. Also the test flight application now supports Vision OS applications. So this is just coming before the developer kit launches. We don't know when that's coming or how much it's gonna cost, but this is kind of just you know telling us that that is coming pretty soon. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And let's start with the most raw rumor about the iPhones every year and that is the exclusive color I swear every single year since like the iPhone 11 Pro we've heard that a red pro iPhone is coming this year it's coming this year it's coming next year we've always heard that and it's never come true so at this point I've stopped believing any type of rumors saying that a red iPhone Pro is coming because they just say it every single year but 95 Mac, a reputable source, did say that red will be the exclusive color for the iPhone 15 Pro this year. However, we have a battle because Mac rumors and Unknowns21 on Twitter are now saying that the 15 Pro will come in a dark blue color. That's going to be the exclusive color this year, not red. And you can see here, this blue shade is very dark. It's said to have a brushed finish that is unlike the stainless steel that Apple used in the past. And this color is similar to the blue that Apple used for the 12 Pro, but just a bit darker and with more of a gray undertone to better complement the titanium finish. So I do think that this blue looks really good. I mean, these pictures make it look really awesome, but I still want a red. I still want that crimson red Pro iPhone, but at this point, like I said, I just have to let go. I have to stop thinking about it because at this point, in my mind, it's just never coming. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you want a red iPhone 15 Pro or do you want a blue iPhone 15 Pro? Let me know in a comment down below. And alongside that iPhone 15 launch, Mark Gurman is reporting that Apple could also be releasing a USB-C case for the existing AirPods Pro. And this is going to be Apple's big step in converting everything over to USB-C. Now, he also mentions that Apple is testing a new hearing test feature Feature. And this hearing test will play different tones and sounds to allow the AirPods to determine how well a person can hear. And we've heard this before, but Apple is also working on a future set of AirPods that will have sensors 
to determine body temperature via the ear canal. So a sensor on the ear canal that sits right inside your ear is going to be able to detect your body temperature. And that's apparently a very accurate you know, way to get your temperature. So that'll be awesome when that eventually happens. And then in that same report, German also says that Apple is working on a new external display for the Mac that will double as a smart home display when it is idle. And this display is going to have an iPhone chip inside, just like the studio display. And this seems very interesting and really random, but I guess when we got the standby feature in iOS 17, it seems like Apple is really a big fan of these smart home displays now. So we'll have to wait and see when this comes out. All right, so let's move on to the ever elusive iPhone SE 4 and why it might not be coming anytime soon. So you might remember in January of this year, year, Ming-Chi Kuo said that the iPhone SE as a whole, the whole iPhone SE line would be canceled. But now the elect is saying that there are plans to continue this budget line of iPhones, but things just will be delayed. So they're saying that the iPhone SE 4 has been delayed by another year due to more concerns over the OLED quality from Apple supplier BOE. Now the issue and the delay appears to be due to BOE focusing on mass producing OLED panels for the iPhone 15 and not the SE. And they may not even be able to achieve mass production for the iPhone 15, let alone the SE. So the report says, depending on the situation, there is a possibility that BOE's iPhone 15 OLED volume will only be zero this year. So sad times if you still have an iPhone SE 3 and you've been waiting for a while for an update, seems like we are still a couple of years away from getting that. And then speaking of OLED, the first OLED iPad Pro is still on track to release next year, but the OLED MacBook Pro has been delayed. So this comes from a new report from researchers at Omdia, which indicate that Apple's plans to release MacBook Pros with OLED displays has been pushed back to 2027 at the very earliest. However, they do mention that Apple is still on track to update the next iPad Pro with the OLED displays in 2024. This is gonna be both the 11 inch and the 12.9 inch. We're gonna get the increase in size on those iPad Pros in a future version, most likely in 2025, 2026, somewhere around there. And while we're talking about delays and displays, we might as well talk about the Apple Watch Ultra and the delay for the micro LED version of the Apple Watch Ultra. So, you know, we're, we're hearing that there's gonna be an Apple Watch Ultra with micro LED, but that's now not expected until 2026. So this is according to a market research firm, Trendforce, who says that mass production of the micro LED Apple Watch has been postponed from early 2025 to the first quarter of 2026. And I'll be the first to say right now, I honestly would not mind if we don't get another Apple Watch Ultra until 2026. I know that's not gonna happen. I know Apple's gonna release one before then, but that's how much I love the Apple Watch Ultra as it is, as a Gen 1 product. And then finally, as tradition, another crazy AirTag story. So let me lay the scene. A lady and three of her friends were in a Texas airport, and after going through TSA, she noticed that her purse was missing. But thankfully, there was not only an AirTag inside, but also one of those friends snapped a picture of the purse before it was stolen. Now, once the lady realized that her purse was stolen and checked the Find My application, she saw that it was still in the TSA security area in that airport. So she attempted to get TSA agents to assist her in tracking down the purse, but they were apparently not helpful and rude. So since she didn't want to miss her flight, she left it behind and boarded the plane back to California where she lives. The day after returning home, she checked the location of her AirTag and her AirPods, by the way, which were also in there, only to find that they were no longer at the TSA checkpoint, and instead, they were at the Metro bus terminal until they eventually lost signal. So she then called a news station where this happened, and they called the Metro station and told authorities which bus the AirTag was found on and which route it took. And with that information, they gave it to the police, and police then asked for video from the bus cameras, which they got, and they're still trying to locate the suspect. Now, the woman thinks that a worker at the airport at TSA took the purse, but there's no proof of that yet. And of course, no suspect has been found yet, unfortunately. So I know that's not the craziest story, but hold on, I have something funny to show you. Take a look at this picture right here. <laughs> this is a picture of a woman who wore an AirTag, literally wore an AirTag at her bachelorette party in Nashville. Now, this is funny, and it's also kind of genius. 
I don't know. Is, is it genius? Is it stupid? I'm, I'm kind of conflicted because it makes sense. You know, if it's her bachelorette party, she's probably going to get pretty drunk. Her friends are probably going to get pretty drunk. This is going to be an easy way to locate her. And it's like right there. So even if somebody wanted to do something with her, they're going to be deterred by the air tag. You know, they're not going to maybe commit a crime because she's wearing that air tag on her. So I don't know. I just thought this was funny and it was in a viral TikTok. And I wanted to share that since it does relate to the air tags. But what do you think? Have you ever worn an air tag? And you know, is that, is that going to be the new fashion piece? that everybody wears. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.